with a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Tail of the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stone's Thunder Flash. In the last episode, we were defeated by Team Zan, and Faye betrayed us as well. And now we have to have a meeting with Chairman Argos, possibly on that topic, but we will just have to find out. Ah, there you are. Firstly, I must apologize. Our information regarding Fey Rune was insufficient. Simeon must have found a way to stop us from identifying him. We'd completely overlooked that the enemy could have been lurking in our ranks. Faye's not our enemy. Hmm, perhaps not. But that's not why I called you here. We finally completed the HEC suppressant. What's that? Let me explain. For a while now, our research and development team have been working on a way to cancel the effects of the HEC gene. And now our research is complete. With the HEC suppression, we can completely eliminate the hyper-evolved children's special powers. That's possible. It is. However, the proper application requires complex treatment. They'll have to really want our help or we won't be able to cure them. Sadly, we don't believe that Simeon will agree to the treatment, even though it could save their lives. Wait, save their lives? You recall that the hyper-evolved children have greatly reduced lifespans in exchange for their abilities. The reverse is also true. If we suppress their powers, their bodies won't be under so much pressure and their lifespan will increase. So they can go back to being normal people again? Precisely. But they would surely find it difficult to part with the very thing that makes them unique. Simeon began his rebellion because he was keenly aware of his reduced lifespan. But now, the only thing running through his head is to take over the world. So he won't listen. Can't we just fix everything by winning the tournament? We can even get Fay back that way. You're right. All we have to do is win. If we beat Ragnarok, we can save everyone. Exactly. Hmm? What's wrong? Does he bother you? You know, it's been bugging me. Who are you? You're funding us under the Elias Benefactor X, but we don't know anything about you. And you're the only adult on our side. You must have been part of El Dorado at some point. How else would you know all the inside info you gave us? I don't really mind if you were. I'd just like to know. Well, it's up to you, I guess. But if you're going to betray us, well, that'd be stupid. You know how that'd work out. Round two, huh? Let's see who we're up against this time. Whoever we face, we can't afford to lose this time. Let's meet in the meeting room. Yes, the very intended purpose of a meeting room, and that is why, uh, that is where we will head right now. So the dialogue outside Eldorado has kind of changed to reflect the fact that we lost the first match. And, uh, yeah, well, it's a best of three, so if we were to lose the next one, then that would be it. We've got to try our very best to get ourselves together and win this next one. But who are we up against? The only way to find out is by heading to the meeting room. Is you-know-what ready for deployment? Right, set it up. Well then, team, all rested and ready for today's match? Yes, sir. That's what I like to hear. I'll be your coach today, so let's head over to the stadium now, shall we? I like having this guy as a coach. It's going to be a very different change of pace. Although, you know who could be a coach? Oh, I don't know. 
Dave Evans, like the ultimate coach in the world who's in our pocket and has already coached this team and gave us dramatic improvements just within the half of a game that he was in play. I don't know, he might be a good fit. Here it is, dudes, the second Mondo important Battle of Ragnarok. The first round went to New Gen, so the pressure's on El Dorado to see if they can tame that wave and level the score today. So you're the second team. <laughs> I'm bored of you already. You were there with Simeon when you destroyed the El Dorado HQ, weren't you? Well, you got a good memory for normal. Of course they do, Mayor. One look at your gorgeous face and it's imprinted on their brain. Really, Giris, you're such a flirt. You're looking quite sharp today yourself. Love the hair. <laughs> so kind of you to say so, Angel. <laughs> Always a pleasure, hun. Oh, I really just had to voice that out loud. Yuck. Mayor and Giris were arguably New Gen's brightest players. There is great intellect behind all the sweet nothings. So, they picked Gil for their second team. Tch, that's bad. They developed New Gen's weaponry. They could have anything in store for us. Gil's battle tactics are first class. Their power far exceeds Zen's. Ugh, so we're in for a rough ride then. If only we'd been able to complete the ultimate 11. We were so close, but then Faye left and now... Well, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped, hasn't it? Faye will come back. I know he will. He's one of the team. Even if he does, that still doesn't solve the problem of the 11th member. As I recall, that would be the all-round player who can pierce any defense with raging fire and quaking thunder. It's me, right? Who's the best choice for player 11, Mr. Evans? Well, if I had to pick someone, it'd be, you know, what's his face with the massive hair? That boy in the enemy's team, Zanark. Wait, you want Zanark to be our 11th player? Well, isn't it obvious? He's got fire and lightning come out of his ear holes. If you can get him on the team, that might be enough already. Yeah, he does seem like a bottomless pit of raw power. I knew you'd say that. Zanuck, what are you doing here? Nah, those guys rubbed me up the wrong way. If I had a pick between a bunch of crazy old men or a gang of moody kids, I know which one I'd choose. So count me in, Gramps. Wait, you're joining our side? Oh, no, no, you can't just wander in that easily. Not after you... you made a fool of us. That ship sailed long ago, Zanuck Avalonic. Sorry, but I'm also against the idea. He can't be trusted. Yes, all very good points. Well, tough luck, plebeians. I've already made up my mind. Now, people, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Granted, your power would be a tremendous aid, Zanuck. That's spelled wrong, by the way. <laughs> but to be perfectly blunt, you're still not good enough. I knew you'd say... Uh... I'm sorry, I think my ears need cleaning. I could have sworn you said I wasn't good enough. You aren't, not yet, but you do have the potential to be the 11th member. We're going to undergo some rigorous training. Do exactly as I tell you and you might just cut the mustard. Not happening. Eh? You haven't even seen a fraction of my true power, you old crystal codger. I'll show you I'm already one of your ultimate 11 and I'll prove it in the match. Looks like Xanax made his mind up. I guess there's no stopping him. Do as you like. It's not as if you're gonna listen to anything we say anyway. Team, get yourselves ready for the match. Speak up when you're ready. Right then. Xanax gonna be playing with us. That's fun. And he's going to be joining us for this very next match alongside an already extremely interesting squad of players. we It's been announced earlier on, but I'll um, let that be reminded when we're actually setting the team up when we speak to Coach Guile for this one. First time we get to call him Coach Guile instead of Schema Guile, but... Um, or well, maybe he's still Schema Guile, I'm not too sure actually, but 
I love being able to talk to Gammon, by the way. This is the only point of the game where you can actually do that. We even learned his surname in the opening cutscene for this tournament. I've already forgotten it, like, but he, uh, he certainly did have a surname announced, and we also get Xanark in the blog. As I keep saying, man, you've got an... Oh, why do I bother? You've already replayed. That's my boy, and that's my guy, Adakebe. Unfortunately, he doesn't get to do much else in Ragnarok, because I already employed him in the forced loss. That was a bit of a bad decision, wasn't it? Right, I'll now announce the lineup for the second team. And it is a very, very interesting one indeed, because it is entirely Protocol Omega players, except for Ricardo, and I, I guess Zanuck doesn't actually count, but he's already got his Mix and Max so so still available, along with Armor Fight Zodiac and Disaster Strike and Bungie Ball Burst. He's going to be very, very good. Our goalkeeper is Romeo, so this is the only time we employ a Protocol Omega goalkeeper. He can armor fly though with Las Vegas, so he's not too bad. He's got Jaro Clocker and Wormhole, my favorite. We get Mike here with all three of the former captains, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. But Ricardo, the sole Ryman player, we are we of course can chuck some more in, like Shun and Hugh, for example. They tend to go quite well with Ricardo. If this were the anime, then Wan Lee and Itor would be joining in. So it was a bit of a waste for me, really, to um, use them in the forced loss. Like, it was partially on purpose. I didn't want to give away the fact that the first match of the tournament was a first loss, so I was trying to disguise that with a fairly balanced team. But, yeah, I um, I didn't have to waste adding Kebe to that. But uh, we can have Strike and Dealer if we want. I think I'm primarily going to be taking Protocol and Mega players, though, because... At the end of the day, um, the Protocol Omega players that you can choose for your team are different depending on each match, so they make sure you can't have the same player twice. They they did think that far ahead, and yeah, just kind of Shun and Hugh, that'll do for Ryman. I would chuck Wan Lee and Itor in if I hadn't already wasted them. Uh, this will be fine. You would also have November on your team by force if this were the anime, but for some reason they force you to use her in the first match in the game. Not sure why, because she's like Beta's best mate, and here you cannot have them on the same team no matter what you want to do. It's a bit odd, but hey-ho. So we've got um, Alpha, Gamma, and Beta. They're all forwards, of course, and you want to balance them fairly well, but at the same time, Xanark is a forward who's kind of even better than them. So for once in my life, I'm actually going to pick a different formation. I haven't decided what yet, but Kind of one that has four forwards at the front dish. F Gamma will do. So Alpha's my favourite, so he's going to go straight in the centre. And then he can be backed up by Gamma and Beta while Zanak is on the front line. Who who, who are you? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you can, you can swap out for Beta then. That will work. We get Mike running behind Alpha. Well, it's not actually a good idea. He doesn't have any blocking moves. Um, I like the idea of having one of these two and the- Oh right, Ricardo. Yeah, he might- he might be important, like, I managed to forget he was even there, oh dear. Um, just make sure I've got some good defenders in play. Kilo will be good. K-0. Uh, he's got Slice and Dice, it's not the greatest. I'm gonna swap him out for DV and his Acrobotics. Sure, we can run with you and Shun on the pitch, they're not amazing, they don't even have any special moves that aren't dribbling, but we can always substitute if we need, and Schema Girl will upgrade the power to fiber optics significantly at a cost to your overall team TP. Dirigo will be captaining the team, I believe he's more than capable. Me? You think I'll be able to keep El Dorado in line? Go for it, Ricardo. Yes, Ben, let's do this. And one final prelude. Um, yeah, this might be my favourite match in the game. I absolutely love this one, both in-game, in-anime, whatever. 
I love taking the reins of a primarily Protocol Omega squad, the so-called villains of the game, we're now going to be using for our own benefit, with Ricardo chucked in for good measure as a good leader and captain, so we will see what he can do. But of course, our opponents are Gil, and we have a canonical couple running in the midfield. They are midfielders, but they've got some very good shooting moves that you do want to keep an eye out for as well. Certainly, you know, you can tell that the Giel team, out of all the second stage children, they picked the prettiest bunch to go in this, and then the other two teams just get the scraps after that. But we'll see how they do at football. We are balanced on level. We're both level 41. I've actually managed it for once. Boards are waxed and wetsuits donned, so let's hit the waves. The match between Eldorado 02 and Giel is ready for kickoff. If we lose here, we lose the whole tournament. Everything rests on this match. I don't know about those outfits, though. My virtuoso looks good in anything. Ah! Yeah, Rosie, we're getting enough of that with the with the Gil team. Let's back off the romance, shall we? Go on, Alpha, make a contribution. Let's start out strong, virtuoso. Huh? What are you doing, Gamma? Pass the ball. I don't take orders from you. Last time I was possessed by that fool Xenarch. You've not had a chance to see how I really play. I'm very ambitious of you, Gamma. But I think you'll find I'll be the woman of the match. Get the ball here, you piece of dirt. Oh no, it seems like there's mutiny in the Eldorado's ranks. Peace and love, dudes. Remember the teamwork. It's only natural that lesser beings should degenerate into clawing, biting animals. Now compare that to our pristine perfection. Ready, hon? As ever, Angel. And they are on full power, so <laughs> to avoid giving them any more screen time than they deserve. Go on then, have a go. We do have our special moves if you want to see a failed gyro blocker or wormhole, but we've already seen both throughout the Let's Play. So, I give these two a bit of flack in the episode so far, but I love that move. No future. Go! Totally easy. Uh, she's the captain, by the way, out of the two. Goal! Giel take the initiative with Mare and Giris' striker partnership and clinch an early lead. Totally tubular. Oh, I knew it was going to be hairy, but Protocol Omega aren't cooperating at all. Don't be so quick to judge. Just watch. Oh, yeah, what do you know about then? Maybe you want to tell the captain of your team like? But we go into free play anyway, and so we get to use Zanuck for the first time, and he's immediately useless. He just loses possession of the ball straight away and then fails to claw it back. Well, that's a shame. But, of course, when you're playing as such a radically different team to what you're used to, you've got to have a think about how to best make the strengths of your other players come into play. Because, of course, Beta and Gamma and Alpha can all armify their fighting spirits, as can your goalkeeper. Even some of the Protocol Omega, well, the Perfect Cascade defenders were able to do so as well. And so, I almost kind of want to get a feel for them as regular players first, but... Surely enough, if you need the fighting spirits, those are available for you right now. Such as the goalkeepers. Um, she's probably going to go for a no future right about now. So, um, safety net, Las Vegas. Hey, I didn't think I'd be in this much trouble. I may need to arm a fly alpha right out the gate then. But let's just go straight for a lucky dice. No future, that is such a cool move, but I am a bit terrified of it. Now, 210 power, yeah, fair enough, we can stop that, but... Oh, it's everything about it. The name, the visuals, the collaboration between the two players, and giving them both a role, I love everything about it. So, I actually... Here's an opportunity. Special tactics, what can we do here? We have all of our usual ones, Virtuous of Thunderbolt, Skies of... 
Uh, we don't actually get anything new, unfortunately. So the entire advantage that we get from Schema Guile is not available. Shouldn't really be using special tactics considering we just tried to do the whole virtuoso thing and they completely refused to cooperate and it didn't work. So I've just somewhat gone against the cannon here, but it's fine because Gargantua is going to stop Peter's shot, right? Let's see what Athen's move is like before we armify Athenian Assault. Very, very beautiful, actually. And that is gonna just about go in. There was very little separating them. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo, while Bita takes the tumble. Well, that's working out better than I thought, actually. We are 1-1 with these guys. That puts us on level fe level peggings. We're still competitive here in Ragnarok, but above all... Oh, Alpha, no! <laughs> Again, if it's, if it's not immediately clear, Alpha is by far my favourite character on the pitch. And this is when you actually get to use him as a player, so I'm desperately wanting to do so. But yeah, kind of ignore the fact we've got a goal. Beater did that on her own power. The spotlight's on us, hun. Ready? Need you even ask? They have the same fighting spirit. Uh, not quite. Couldn't you read? They were different type elements as well. You know, one was air, the other was ground. Now, Angel, teach them how flawlessly elegant you truly are. Beauty is not in the eye of the beholder. It's here! Mare's fighting spirit completely tore through the keeper like a shark through a board. Romeo put up a brave attempt to defend, but it looks like he was really blown away by her beauty. What light through yonder window breaks, dudes? That's not a light, it's the half-time whistle. I believe it's time to deploy our ace in the hole. And so, Ricardo's team of Protocol Omega players are a goal down, and they have to trust each other if they want to get things back on track. The devilish fighting spirits of the lovers are going to make this even harder for the Ryman-ish team. See you in the next episode to see if they can win.